Good morning, Sonia. How are you? Good morning, Dan. I'm very well, thank you. Gosh, it's been a little while, hasn't it, since we've... It has, it has. Yeah, thank you yeah. for um, giving me this opportunity to talk yeah. about uh, my experiences and my father's experiences. Yeah, I, I must say a big thank you to, to agree to participate in this, mm -hmm. you know, because um, it's okay doing this kind of journey, but I don't, if I don't get participants like yourself, then, you know, yeah. it's not really what we want. So thank you very much. So we're going to go through um, the next hour or so and talk about your life journey. So if we'd like to start off about, if you could tell me about your, your background, place of birth, yeah. parents, etc. Okay, um, so I'm, um, I was born in Birmingham, um, I'm uh, of mixed heritage, so my mother um, is white um, and my, so she's, she's from here, she's from England, um, and my father, um, he's from the Caribbean islands of Grenada, um, his name is Theophilus Albert Latouche, um, he was born in 1936. Um, and he came over here um, in the 50s, I would say. So his okay. motherland needed him to serve. Um, mm. Motherland meaning here, <laughs> Great Britain. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that, that's what that's what made me come about, I suppose. Um, okay. So yeah, so when my when my father came over here, it was very difficult. Um, you know, it, it was very he was homeless, let's say. Um, for a while, uh, knocking on doors. Um, and those were the days when it was no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. Um, okay. So, you know, he came on his own. He didn't come with anybody else. Okay. Um, so he, and as I said, it was because he was, you know, he was offered the opportunity to serve for this country. Um, so did, did, did your father come directly to serve or did he? Did he, did he... Come well, I think it was because there were jobs. So I think things were being advertised maybe in Grenada um, for him to come over. It's it's opportunities, isn't it? You know, Grenada right. being a very small island. Um, okay. And, you know, it was still under the English rule. So he didn't have a Grenadian passport for a very, very, very long time. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so he he was, he was here. Uh, he came over here um because as i said it, it was a job that he was going to to do i suppose mm -hmm. um and it was a it was an asian household who actually allowed him to stay with them is that right yeah it was an asian household yeah okay. yeah, yeah yeah because as i say those were the times where you know yeah. people of color were not allowed in in white accommodations i suppose yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and that's here in birmingham somewhere is it this was in London, so he he arrived in London first. Um, okay. So he was he was there first, um, and yeah, so yeah, so that that that's that really. And then I don't know how long ago, you know, how much years later or how much time later mm. he then um, started to serve in the military. So so so, so were you were you born then? And your... I was no, no, because he, because bear in mind, this was when he just came over, so he oh, came see. over around the fifties. So okay. I was, I was born in eighty, so much, 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 much later. So during, right, you know, it. by that time he already served. He already, oh, I see. you know, he already yeah. was a, a veteran. Okay. Um. So yeah. So yeah. he, when when I was born, that was when he decided to um educate himself further and he's a right. he became a graduate for something and it's very difficult because he's no longer here so i can't ask for these things from him oh, right, right. So <laughs> all i can remember is little bits and bobs that he used to talk yes about. yes yes so have you got siblings i'm an only child are you really yes i'm all an right. only child so so my mom um she was told that she couldn't have children um and then when she was 45 i came along really yeah so i'm a miracle child so to speak. <laughs> i like that um, <laughs> um sadly she only got to experience being a mom for five years um she passed away when, when oh, i was five yeah, sorry yeah, to hear yeah. That. Sorry um to hear. but yeah but my, my mom and my dad i mean they really 
loved each other. Mm. They, you know, mm. they really loved me. So my my mom, um, I was told that she had, um, you know, like special learning needs um, and there's mm. certain things that she couldn't do. Mm. Um, and so when I was a baby, my my father used to come home from work at lunchtime and mm. you know do my bottles and feed me okay, and okay. so you know so that's you know it's really nice that you yeah. know there was no yeah. judgment but it was more, more about care and nurturing you know my mother cared for me as much as she could the best right. way she could and, yeah. and my father cared for me the best way he could so yeah. he, so he took over from the age of five when your mother passed away your dad um so oh. so he well he tried to let's say uh, yeah. but sadly you know he missed my mum a lot yeah um and he he, he was an alcoholic <laughs> so that kind of worsened okay um, as when my when my mum passed i mean i don't really remember him drinking prior to my mum passing but obviously mm. that had affected him badly um when when she did pass so sadly i went into into foster homes and and then oh. I lived, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I lived in, um, I then moved to Grenada when I was um, 12. Oh. So, yeah, so I, I then lived with my um, my auntie, so my father's sister. Um, and she had no children. So it was only me again. I was an only child. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I, I went to school in Grenada um, as a teenager. Um, and yeah, I think I think being a, a westernized yes. girl, though, you know, it, it felt like a, a very small island, a tiny island. I will see what you're saying because yeah. you've experienced the wider world here. Absolutely, and then you've gone yeah. there. Absolutely. So, wow. So, you know. so what are the what the, what are the difference was there then? Because, it, you know, I talked to a lot of people who've done the journey the other way. Yeah. <laughs> Come to the Caribbean here to the wider world. So what? Yeah. What else? strange did you experience or I think, or good i think um i think the strange things really i think being the age of 11 was when i got in contact with my my dad's family um you know they it's not like they knew me before then my my father my father's um dad so my granddad him and him and my dad they used to uh, write letters to each other um but I wasn't really seen as accepted being a mixed race person, being right. a mixed race child. Okay. Um, so there, there were probably some who disapproved, you know, not mm -hmm. everybody, but mm -hmm. probably some who disapproved um, of my dad's choices, so to speak, um, being over here. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, as years went on, mm -hmm. um, there were other other people in the family who did want to know me and as I say one of those was my aunt wow. um so she came she came to see me um I think I must have been about 10 11 years old um that was the first time I saw her um, went to Barbados which I loved okay. and I just you know it was just it was just a, a, a big eye opener really it was nice yes. to see family you know my biological family I mean bear in mind you know I was a child age five mm. who was somewhat taken from her biological family yeah um into foster home and therefore I had to learn to adapt yes, uh, yes, to, yes. you know my identity I feel was strict because right. I was no longer um let's just say I was no longer a Latouche I was no longer you know to me it's like mm. I had to adapt to another home mm. um and I was a child you know yes, yes there were siblings there and I saw that as that was a nice thing because being an only child it's like oh mm. there's other children let's play yes. and everything yes um but it, it wasn't a great experience um so you know going to see my biological family age 10 11 years old was wow mm. you know there's wow. there's actual people you know they're, yes. they're cousins i have cousins and, and, they, and were they of similar were they of similar age you're, you're um they i would say there was probably the odd one or two who are of similar age but bear okay. in mind our cultures are completely different mm. so there was me being a, a westernized independent girl who 
let's say knew her rights, had a voice, mm. you know, I was, you know, very smart. Mm. So I don't know if I was smart mouth in, in terms of being cheeky or mm. whatever, but, you know, I was, I was allowed to have my own mind. I was allowed to have friends. I was allowed to hang out. There were so mm. many things I was allowed to do. Mm. Looking back, whether they were good things or not, though, is a different story. Mm. Um, because maybe I was exposed to a lot of things before my time. Yes, yes, um, yes. Because you were in a, a foster home, and you yeah, had, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, so, it goes with the territory, doesn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. 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 And I, and I think I, I think really it was just you know I've always when I describe myself as a foster child, all I can remember is I remember. I say to people, I, I feel as though I had to hustle from yes. such a young age. Yes. You know, I yes. had to look after me from the age of six onwards. It's so survival, isn't it? It's, it's survival. survival. And that's the and it's survival. And it's learning, you know, learning things as yeah. well. There's a nature yeah. nurture thing, I suppose. Yes. So going to the Caribbean and seeing my family, and you know, there's someone who's very like myself, very outgoing and I've seen the world, I've been exposed to everything and anything mm. and and actually it wasn't really a good thing for them because oh. maybe I could have been influencing them. Yes, yes, yes. You I, know what I mean? Yeah. So my, you know, so as I say, I mean Barbados is beautiful. It's where my aunt works. She was an accountant. Um, she was also a teacher. Uh, she studied at um, the University of West Indies in Jamaica. Okay. Um, so she's, you know, she's been around um, mm. the Caribbean. And yes, yeah, so it was lovely for me to see her side of the world, really. Indeed. Um, yeah. And holidays are different to living somewhere. <laughs> That's yeah. what I realised, you know, holidays is all about, yeah. oh, it's all good, 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 good. So good. were you holidaying in Barbados or did you I was stay holidaying in, in Barbados. So I was oh, holidaying I in Barbados, holidaying in Grenada, and it was all nice, a nice experience. And then came, came a time where my aunt then says, how would you feel about living here? Um, and, and a part of me thought, you know, this is my biological family. Mm, do you know what mm. I mean? This yes, is my I do. I do. Family. This is my, yes. this is, this is where my, my father grew up. Yes. This is where, you know, we, and we actually stayed in the family home, you know, where oh. my father slept as a child, where my yes. aunt slept as children and, you know, my granddad was still around then as well. And I guess that 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 meant a lot to you, didn't it? That, that Absolutely, time? it did. It, it did mean a lot because I thought there's somebody, there's somebody out there who wants me. There's somebody mm. out there. It's that sense of belonging. You know, I, I get that. Feel, where do you belong? Yes. There was nowhere at that time where I thought, where do I belong? And with yes. my, you know, my grandfather's name was um, Theophilus Albert Latouche Senior. So with my dad's name being Theophilus, Theophilus Albert Latouche Jr. You okay. know, Latouche was coming back. The identity was coming back. You know, it was mm. really nice to, you know, being from going from Barbados to Grenada, though, is very different. So Barbados is very touristy. And, yes. You know, very, um, again, westernised, I suppose. <laughs> and it's something that me and my... Me and my aunt have spoken about before because I did say to my aunt, I, I, I do think if I was in Barbados, maybe I would have stayed there for longer. Mm -hmm. I would have lived there for longer because I think I would have felt that sense of belonging with that little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But then my aunt did say to me, and this is only say a few months back, she says, well, actually, the problem is, is that my influences that I had over here in England still probably would have been the same over there. Yes, so I would yes. have known no different in that yes. sense. Whereas yes. Grenada, you know, living in Grenada, which is, as I say, where the father's birthplace, you know, for me, that really stopped me in my tracks. You know, mm -hmm. I felt like I was kind of strict, but in a good way. Looking mm -hmm. back, I was mm -hmm. strict, but in a good way. You know, mm -hmm. I was, it, it, mm -hmm. it, it was, you know, it is like an, an onion, you know, just peeling away mm -hmm. the things that aren't good for me. And right. actually yeah. teaching me the things that I needed to know, teaching me the basics. And even yes. though, bear in mind, on I was, you know, 12 mm. and I was there for a couple of years. I was there for two years. Um, 
we, you know, me and my aunt, we had great times, but we also, I mean, just like with any family, you have good yes. times, you have bad times. Yes. But yes. I think for me, my heart was still longing for England because oh, that was okay. where I was born. Right, right. You know, I miss my school friends. I yes. miss my, you know, I, I miss the people who are new. And that's yes, what it yes, is. It's yes. like people who you know, it's about yeah. experiences that you know. So, I, you know, so I remember my, my aunt, um, you know, I did say to my aunt, I feel like I'm not settling. And it was two years later. Mm -hmm. So my, my aunt understood, you know, and she, mm -hmm. she sent me back. I mean, bear in mind, you know, I was still under foster um, social services over here. So there was communications yeah. with the foster, sorry, the social worker over here and stuff. Um, and it's just, you know, basically it's not really working out. Mm -hmm. She wants to go back. I can't fall, you know, I can't force her to stay, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so, you know, my aunt really uh, listened to, mm. to what I wanted at the time. Um, and, you know, talking about things now and how, like on reflection, mm. my aunt says to me, you know, I knew it wasn't going to work um, because we're so, it was so different for me as a mm. teenager. If I left when my mother passed away. At age five, yes. Yeah, yeah at age five. I would have mm. been on the wiser. Yes. So I probably still would be there now. You know, I would be a Grenadian. Do you know what I mean? But I would say, and I know about what you say, that experience of spending two years in Grenada yeah. is quite an, quite an experience, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's made. It's made a massive difference to my adult life. Um, and, you know, speaking to my aunt recently, you know, we always talk about these things. We're very close. Very, yeah, very, very close. Good, good, good. Um, and you know, my aunt is always amazed at how much of an impact Grenada had on me. You know, just mm. by being there for two years, mm. I it, it totally transformed me. Well, there were significant years in your life, though. Yeah, definitely. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. There's I mean, so many different reasons, you know. Yeah, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, coming from a home a, a care home or what yeah. foster home whatever you call yeah. it where you you didn't have a family it was just um, you and some others and yeah. you go in where you had family yeah you know? and again it's so different in the caribbean to where you are. that's quite a it's steep, it's steep, exactly. steep learning curve. Yeah. yeah i mean don't get me wrong i mean you know, the foster home was a family mm. but it's just i knew the word my family Yes, yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes, and, yes. you know, by the different types of treatment and things like mm. that. Um, but, you know, there's there's many of them within the family who I'm, I am close to now. But then there's many others who I've detached myself from them because, again, it's an identity thing for me. Mm. You know, being, being of mixed heritage yes. um, is can be tricky in terms of identity anyway. Absolutely, absolutely. Knowing who who accepts me and who don't really and like I've mentioned mm. you know back then you know it was my my mother's family I would say probably accepted me more because they were over here and mm. you know and raised me with open arms but there was, mm. as I said there was some on my father's side who didn't um oh, but okay. over time you know yes. that's it, it's time over time mm. just because one person decides to be ignorant doesn't make the whole of the family ignorant yes and that's the thing yes yes yes, yes and that's why as i say me and my aunt were so so close now yeah. um, and my experiences that i had in the caribbean that's really instilled in me which i've now passed down to my children excellent, you know, excellent. As, a, as a mom Yes, um, yes, yes. It's important. It's very, very yeah, absolutely, important. absolutely. How how close were you to dad then? And you know, like what yeah, me and my do? dad, we were close. Mm. <laughs> we were. I would say we were close, even mm. though I think he. I think it was difficult for him. I think very similar to what I'm talking about with identity. Mm. I think he struggled with being over here, right? Um, and he he's identity as a black man, mm. really, mm. um. The struggles he faced so again like i've mentioned right at the beginning you know he's very smart dressed and mm. he's knocking on doors just asking for a place to stay and they won't even let him in you oh. know it, it must have been horrible and then yeah. being somebody you know being in love with somebody outside of his race mm. you know i yeah. suppose that was another 
difficult Absolutely. to speak for both. Absolutely. Really. Did, did, did your dad ever talk to you about his military experience? He did. Well, he, he served um, when he came over. He did serve. I wasn't sure. I'm not sure which department he was as such. Um, well, was he in the army? Did he you, was did in you... the army, in the Be British okay. army. Yeah, 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 he was yeah. in the British army. Um, and I remember him telling me that something had happened whilst he was there, whilst he was in there, um, and he lost his eye from it. In the forces, while he was yeah, serving? Yeah, yeah, he lost his eye. So he's lost his eye in the forces. Um, so he, he, he moved from, let's say, department to department, I suppose. So mm. he became the cook. So he okay. was the cook. <laughs> okay. and I think he enjoyed it because he did enjoy cooking. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so, 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 you know, even though he could no longer, you know, let's say fight or... Yes, you know, yes, yes. Up, you know, it's nice that they allowed him to still be a part of, oh, nice. part of it. Because, again, it's family, isn't it? Yes, you yes. Know, oh, being, gosh. being in the forces. Yes. He was, a, he was a proud veteran. Um, and they really did help him. I mean, sadly, he passed away in 2006. Um, oh. But when he when he had a place, when he he was living in um, Scotland, so he moved from Birmingham years and years and years and years before, and he lived up in Scotland. Um, and the the British Army helped him. Really, furniture and oh, things like that. So it was always. He was always a part of it in terms of being noticed in that sense, you know, if he needed mm. help, he knew where he could go. Mm. Um, well, I don't think he had many friends. I think okay. you know, he was quite um, lonely. Um, mm. You know, when when he used to drink, he used to come out, you know, oh, you know, mm. everybody's racist and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. where you come from and stuff. So did, I think did, in some way he was proud, but there was some times he was angry. He yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Did you did you see him much um, when he went to Scotland? Yeah, so 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 I did I did see him. Um, so he used to live in Arbroath, oh. um, which is a beautiful, beautiful part near um, Aberdeen. Mm. Um, beautiful, beautiful place, and and he was he's he was getting to an age. I mean, he was seventy okay. at that point. Um, okay. So you know, he was getting to an age where he wanted a place to retire, maybe, mm. and to relax. So when I went out, when I went up to Scotland to visit him, I used to see him a couple of times, mm. um, and I used to think, you know what, this is the the best place for him because mm. you know there's a there's a beach. Yes. Know, there's, a, there's a seaside there so yeah. in a way it's a bit like home from home in a sense yeah. a bit like coming full circle yeah. you know not necessarily the caribbean or yeah. you know the, the the beach is there but he was living next to the beach oh that's good that's home. good so yeah. you know when he came back to 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 to, to, to birmingham from yeah grenada still at yeah. school yeah how were the how were the final years in school for you how were they um, they were they were okay. Yeah. <laughs> I felt a little bit smarter because oh, it, yeah, because I think in in the Caribbean, um, I was aware that you know if you fail an exam, then you have to repeat the year. You know, <laughs> and I made sure oh, I right. didn't fail any exams. You know, my aunt <laughs> being a teacher. Yeah. Um, oh right, yes. That my you know when I was in year seven, so yeah. I should have been in year eight over there, but because of the Caribbean education system. You know, mm. it's so different. Mm. So I went back to being in year seven, which is first year at high school, mm. which was which was good. Um, and yeah, and I, I just think, you know, I made sure I passed those exams and I went up mm. to the next year. So it was year eight when really over here I should have been in year nine. Okay. Um, and then, so yeah, so it, it really, the education system over there really did a lot for me. Mm. Um, you know, I I studied a lot more, you know, and that's why mm. I say I, I felt a bit smarter, you know. Oh, that's good, that's good. So like so that. so while you're at school then, towards yeah. the school end of school life, then our school yeah. years, did you sort of know what you wanted to do? Um did you have um, a yes. So I always wanted, even from a, a young child, I always wanted to be a news presenter. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed reading. Reading was my thing. It's something I loved doing. Whether it was reading a newspaper, 
at mm. age six years old or seven oh. years old, just reading, just reading. Um, okay. And I think when I used to read the newspaper, I used to kind of talk about it. I used to probably read aloud. Oh. Um, so, yeah, so I went to, so, but then when I was traveling, you know, to different islands and everything, yes, yeah. I also wanted to be an air hostess. Oh, okay. That's another thing I wanted to do. So, yeah, so I've, I've always been ambitious. Mm. Um, so we're coming over here when I was 14. Mm. Um, I still kind of knew what I wanted to do, um, mm. where I wanted to go. I didn't really have the support, though, because, again, I was back in foster care. Okay. So I went backwards in that way. Right, right. Um, yeah. So, you know, again, my identity was stripped again. <laughs> it was like, you know, yeah. I think I think in my head, I felt as though, okay, time had stopped. Well, actually, time doesn't stop, does it? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. People get older. Mm. Whilst I've been over in the Caribbean, people mm. have been getting on with their lives over here. Yes, yes. So, yes. you know, as a child, you, you totally forget that. You just think, oh, yeah, I can... You know, mm. I can slip back into how wow. things were, um, and and that didn't actually happen. You know, my oh. my accent was still quite strong. Um, <laughs> but then well, but when you say your accent was strong, what do you mean? So my Grenadian accent. So, oh, so I had a Grenadian accent. Don't ask <laughs> me to say anything now because I don't have a Grenadian. <laughs> but then when I went back to school, I think because it was so easy, because I was going to school over there, yes, yes, talking yes. to people over there, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. quite quickly. Um, but then coming over here, you know, again, it's that I then became a foreigner because wow. my accent was different. Wow. Um, I did get bullied. Um, there was so you did? Did yeah. you say yeah? Okay. Yeah, I did get bullied. Um, more so, yeah, when I came back over. I think it was because, you know, the fact that I did travel, the fact that I, mm. you know, I have done things. I'm, I, I was a different person. You were life. different. You were different I, to the I rest. I was different. Absolutely, yeah. I was different. Um, so yeah, and I, I think, I think based on that, you know, things had changed. Um, my GCSEs weren't the best. Okay. Um, and but yeah, at the same time, I was happy to be let's say home you know I was happy yeah, yeah, yeah. to be yeah. in, a, in my familiar surroundings I suppose even though I noticed things have changed yeah I was happy to be in familiar surroundings um but then I left home when I was 17 going on 18 okay. um and then I lived in a hostel wow so so in a way I think I look at myself sometimes and I look at my dad I think about my dad because we're very, mm. I think we're very similar in the sense that we be, we we were both kind of not lone rangers, but mm. we've just had to get on with it. So you know, when you left home at seventeen, in the middle, yeah, did you feel very independent? Yes, you... <laughs> I right. did. I felt, um, like I said, Don. I think you know, I was exposed to a lot of things before my time. Mm. Anyway, mm. Um, I think being in foster care, you realise that actually. People are getting paid for this. And what you then as a child, you think, well, these people care for me. It's mm. not about, you know, they don't look at money. As, as mm. children, we don't look at money. Yes. We yes. realise that actually fostering is actually a job. Yes. And therefore, they're getting paid for, for this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I remember when I was about <clears throat> 16, 17, saying to my foster parents, you know where's my money I don't see it. I don't you know I don't know where it's gone right. um and so you know there was a I, I came I lived in a in a, a mixed race home as well okay. mixed parentage home um and therefore you know I was seen as then having attitude um and just because I was thinking well my money's somewhere do you know what I mean like, mm. Mm. spent it somehow yeah um and so yeah so I was ready to leave I was definitely ready to leave because I thought well at least then if I see mm. money it's going yeah. to me do you know what I mean it's yes yes yes, yes yes where it's going to go it's not going yeah. to be exploited or anything it's it's mine it's not, not going to be abused that was quite mature thinking then really at the time 
Well, I had to really, because yes. I think yeah. I had to, again, it's another survival mechanism. I think you realize who to trust and who not to trust, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's sad, it's, it's a sad thing to think about when you're a child. Yes, you yes, have yes. to think about trust and, and yeah. things. Um, but, you know, a part of me thinks, well, if I didn't, where would yeah. I be now, you know? If, yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you go straight into a job at, say, 17, 18? Or, or? Yeah, so I, I worked at, um, I, went, I did go to college during that oh, time. Okay. Um, and then I was working in uh, British Telecom. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then I had my, my first child when I was 19. Okay. So, so it, yeah, I think, you know, I was very, uh, and, 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 you know, my, my daughter was planned um, because I, I, need, I wanted someone to call my own. Right. So, so, so it's a daughter you had? So it's a daughter I had. Yeah, yeah she's okay. 22 now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, um. But yeah, and, and, you know, she was someone who I wanted to call my own. Bear in mind, again, yeah. I was still very much on my own in this world. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. So I think she has influenced me a lot into becoming the person I am today, um, right. along with my 10 year old. Oh, okay. okay. And she, she's also influenced me into the person I've become today. Um, yeah. And it's good, you know, we work really well as a team. And, and That's really good, that's really. Did yeah. you ever, uh, uh, did you ever actually get to do your dream um, ambition of, uh... <laughs> Not really, well, somewhat. So I I did study media studies when I mentioned I wanted to be a news. Yeah, yeah. I did, stud, I did um, study media studies, really enjoyed it. Mm. Then I learned actually there's a lot of journalism and freelancing involved and you're not always going to get paid. And yeah, yeah. So that's why um, I did kind of knock that one on the head. I never say never though. I mean, mm. I used to, be in the uh the college do this college radio with another okay. person um so yeah but my my children i mean my 22 year old is now studying law um i think when i became uh when i was 19 i think for me it was all about helping people back then mm. you know i was living in uh, an area which was very deprived um and I think, like I've mentioned earlier, like as a child, I felt like I had to hustle. Mm, Actually, mm. I knew that, you know, it, it's hard for people, but it's mm. knowing what to do and what to do legally. Do you know what yes, I mean? Yes, it's yes, yes, about, yes, yes, yes. It's not yeah. about, you know, for some people, it's not, you know, I've never done it, but for some people, it's for taking the drugs and, mm. you know, using the right. bodies and things for other things. And you just think, you know what, there's more to life than this. Your work so much more. So uh, at, at, at what age did you uh, introduce your children to their Caribbean roots, so to speak? So, um, well, my, well, put it this way. I mean, my, my daughter, my 22 year old now, so her family, um, her dad's side of the family are um, from Jamaica. Okay. So we've always been kind of exposed to the Caribbean on both sides, really. We've okay. got Grenada, Jamaica yeah. and Grenada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I did take, I did take my daughter to Grenada back in 2000. And, no, no, I don't think it was 2000 or something. It might have been actually, I think 2007. Um, and she was seven years old. My youngest hasn't been. Mm. Um, and that's definitely something I'd like to do. I mean, we video yeah. call each other. Everything's expensive these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but again, you know, with, with both my children, you know, their father's family are both from um, Jamaican heritage. Mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so my eldest has been to jamaica she's been to jamaica with her nan um and she was going to go to jamaica this year as well uh, because that's where her her grandparents well her great grandparents live right right right, live right, right, and right. Things. um mm -hmm. and yeah and the same with my you know with my youngest i mean hopefully she will take a trip to, to jamaica as well but we're mm -hmm. we're very much um i would say probably influenced by Caribbean, the Caribbean culture anyway. 
Well, that's good. That's living, good. Living, breathing. Yes, yes, yes. Because did I you? Think, sorry, sorry. Did you say you you went into teaching? Did you did you go into teaching? Yes. Yeah, so um, so yeah. So so when I was well, I've, I've done many things done. <laughs> <laughs> so as I said, I mean, I had I had my daughter when I was nineteen, and then yeah. let's fast forward to probably age twenty one. Um, okay. and I decided to do a uh, teacher assistant um, oh. course so I did my level three teacher assistant course and you know back then those things were free you know education was free then um, and I really appreciated that because that really helped me it was free mm. I, I had a free course my daughter had free childcare. it worked oh. um, so I studied that for two years um, and I passed that really, you know, with a distinction. Um, and then I, well, the, there's that part of me again, when, when I was probably about 22, 23, that made me think, you know, I'm, I'm working as a teaching assistant. I mean, in these placements. Mm. Um, and actually, I'm sure I can be a teacher. I'm mm. sure I can do a teacher's job. So I was very confident back then, Dom. Um, mm. And that's what made me look into the teaching side of things okay. um but then during that time i um was struggling with my mental health when i was studying for my uh, teaching assistant qualification mm -hmm. um and it was just you know it was just more about pressure really just a yeah. lot was, was on me and i was you know bringing up a, a, a small child at the same time and it was just mm -hmm. go 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 um so i used to go to counselling okay um and my counsellor was really really good and then I thought I want to be a counsellor oh. I remember waking up one day and saying I want to be a counsellor <laughs> I thought I don't care how I do it but I want to be a counsellor oh. um so yeah so when I so once I completed my teaching assistant qualification um back when I was 23 I then went into the counselling uh went to do a counselling course um, and I studied that all the way up to a level four. Oh. Um, again, it was free, um, free education. Um, my placements, I mean, they were lovely. Again, free. So at this point, I was on, I was on benefits. You know, I wasn't getting any paid work. Mm. So, but from being a teaching assistant to being a counsellor, you know, I used to see my experience and me just being there and volunteering. Mm. You know, my my benefit money was like a wage for me oh, yeah. okay. me? yes yes, but I was yes giving something back to society anyway yes um so yes yeah, so i i i supported women um who suffered with like domestic violence and things um so yes yeah, so i was counseling i did my counseling course and i was there for about a year um to a year and a half really really enjoyed it because again, mm. I was all about people's rights. I was mm. all always about, you know, helping people to know their rights and to know what how much they they are worth and how much they're valued, mm. and that's important. Yes, um, yes. So yeah, so there was that, and then I realised actually, you know, when I when I completed the counselling course, I loved it and everything, but then I realised if I don't get clients. I don't get paid mm. so it was another realistic thing to say mm. I need something that I can actually I know I'm going to get paid mm. um, which is what then made me go into teaching oh, so it was teaching okay. assistant counsellor and then I, I did my teaching qualification oh. um, and yeah so I did my cert aids and really really enjoyed it still love being in the classroom mm. um, and again but it, it's always that for me it's always about that pull of wanting to help people mm. so it's not just about teaching them in terms of academic but teaching them in terms of life skills basic skills functional skills you know just mm. how to survive sometimes um so yeah so then i i then became um a form tutor so I've, i used to teach um employability and it um at a employability and it, and IT. IT yeah oh, all right um, okay. And then I worked in a community centre um, and they then paid for me to study my um, my ESOL teaching qualification, so English as a second language. 
Mm -hmm. So I then became a teacher um, as, as a, you know, it got English as a second language. So that was my my next job. So I really, really enjoyed that. And that's taken me to many places. And so so, so was that, was that more on the adult side, was it? Or was it? That was more on the adult. So that, that right. was post 16, post 16. Okay. Um, but I think because I was in a community environment, yes. that then also helped me to tap into, you know, looking at welfare rights and, and helping people to just again know their rights really and know what they can what they're entitled to um to things like that so yeah so and then fast forward again i then became um education welfare officer wow. so it was all about knocking on doors helping families to make sure their child goes to school so attendance was important um but also helping families as well Right, right, right. So you'd get these families that they, they, the children had sort of a, a poor attendance. Yeah. So you, so you try and encourage them to, to come to, to school. Attend. Yeah. And if there was a problem, it's about listening to them and knowing, right. you know, why is there a problem? What, what is the reason? Mm. Um, and then trying to support them as much as we can. Like I used to say to parents, you know, prosecution is the last, last thing I wanted to do. You know, referring them to the attendance and prosecution service. I don't, you know, I don't want to do that. It's all about, you know, they're probably just about got the money for heating and for food mm. and things. So mm. actually, to refer someone to the prosecution service, sometimes it doesn't help. And that's no. why I'm like, well, well, you need to bring your child to school. <laughs> yeah, your child needs to because... come to school to be entitled to the free education that we all we yeah. all deserve in terms of your children. And it's a very difficult world, isn't it, where yeah. you have some people who are in that particular category and it just gets worse for them. Because if people, like you say, if they'll refer to the prosecution, I mean, what happens to that child or those, you know, it's, it's not a good journey, is it? No, no. So if you can help like you were doing there, that, that's, that's so much better for Absolutely. them and society. Absolutely. And, and I think that it was something I really enjoyed, but there was a lot of pressure involved. Yes. Um, yeah. And, you know, it, it wasn't nice to refer families to the APS, no, you know, but no. I really enjoyed knocking on the doors. Mm. <laughs> and it's did something you, that I miss. Did you find that some people really appreciated what you did for them? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just, just by being there. And I think just by being that listening ear. I mean, don't mm. get me wrong, when they first saw me, straight away the you know the, the guard is up and you know they think oh so, here we go another person of authority oh i see i see you know i mean i, I was just wanting you to qualify what that what you mean when they first saw yeah, you yeah so you it's know. just the barriers are up and they don't want to all right somebody yeah. like me and you know because they they probably would consider me as a negative person really um but, but why would that be is it because you're female or something or what, 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 no, what i think because of i think because of maybe how they've experienced things from other people of authority such as okay services and right 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 things right, right. like that you know already the the judgment is yes is on there really it's on me um and i think really it was about me saying look i'm, I'm not social services i'm not a social worker mm. and and sometimes Telling them my story, mm. you know, being a foster child. Right, yes, knowing yes. Knowing what it's like to have social service yes. involvement. There's, there's empathy there, isn't there, straight there's away? The empathy, the, absolutely. Yeah. You know, mm. not working, being mm. on benefits. You know, there's so many things that I've done in my lifetime, really, mm. where I think, you know what, actually I'm helping the next person because I'm yeah. saying to them, if I can do it, yes, somebody can do it. Do you know absolutely, I mean? absolutely. So talking about your life then, I believe yeah. you've had experience with, was it your partner that was suff suffered to post traumatic Yeah, experience? so my ex, yeah, so my, my, my ex-partner. Ex-partner. Um, he, so we, I mean, we were, we, we knew each other for about, I'll probably say about a year and a half. Um, mm. But yeah, he, he served, he was in the, he was in the military. Mm. Um, in the British Army, okay. he fought in a lot of <clears throat> he fought in a lot of wars as well. Really, he showed me his medals, which was very okay. proud of. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Um, yes. However, 
person on a personal level, he struggled. You know, he really, really struggled. And that is, that, is that after leaving the forces? After or? leaving the forces, yeah. Did you did you know him while he was serving? No, or? I didn't oh, okay. know him while he was serving. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm still in contact with his family, so I think mm. that'll be nice for you know mm. if they if they would like to talk about his mm. life and mm. Mm. you know mm. everything. I think that would be nice. For them mm. um well yeah i think uh yeah he was very very proud but at the same time he was very he became very very lonely very very alone yes yes um yes. which was which was hard for me to see really i mean he was a father yeah um a really really good dad he was always there for his children and um, he was actually um born in jamaica as well okay so, uh, coming over to a new a, a different country you know and yeah. fighting for uh fighting in an army that's not your own country mm. do you know what i mean it's like a new world really yes, um, yes, yes. and i suppose in a way for him it was that i don't know if it was a struggle but i think it was more the the isolation that he felt right. because in the in the forces you know like we've mentioned there's that sense of belonging there's that family that coming mm. together mm. and actually when you when he left he didn't quite have that all oh, right he had um he had a you know he had a family and so he you know he he would come over so after after finishing he'd be on that break and he'd mm. you know he'd come over and then he'd have his you know be spent time with his family and everything and then and then he's being called back again. Mm. So, you know, it's just, it was a lot of to and fro for him. Yeah. Uh, but then he... when, he, when it did complete and when he did become a veteran, I mean, he was only young. Um, but I think he was so used to going back and forth, back and right. forth, that actually when it was, when he finished and he stayed, I think that's when things started maybe to be a struggle for him. So when you say young, what age are we talking about? Well, he died. Um, he died when he was thirty-eight. So he struggled with post-traumatic stress. Yeah, yeah. Did Did he ever confide in you in terms of what he did in the military, where he went, and how it was for him? Um, he confided in me in the sense that he he mentioned, you know, a few things, things that more he witnessed. You okay. know, when it was about families, I can't remember if he went to Afghanistan or Iraq. I'm not quite sure, but there were things that he witnessed, right? You know, and I think it was more about, you know, I don't know what part he played yes. in as well. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think when you see bloodshed anyway, mm. I think that's enough to kind of make you. It's not something he would necessarily vocalise, mm. but yes. actually it's, it's more about, I think he wanted to have safety for himself in the end. I think, you know, for me, you know, looking back, because sadly mm. he passed away, um, you know, he, he took his own life. Wow. <clears throat> and I think, you know, because again i think it became that isolation for him so, no so one to talk to. yeah so you know i guess there was no evidence leading up to that that you could see that you know he was no well we um we separated um months and months and months before then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so really we just became friends okay. and you know, it was just checking on how he was and, right, and, and right, right. he's okay. Um, and then we had we had a conversation um, about two days before he passed. Really? Um, yeah. And you know, he was talking about things, and you know, I was trying to again, like I've been mentioning in, in this, really about helping people mm. and see what we can mm. do mm. and things. We was. We was looking at that together really it's like right. come on let's let's see if we can help you and yeah, you know yeah. do you need and I, I remember saying to him do you need anything do you need mm. you know do you want to give you any money or mm. anything like that no no i'm fine and he would mm. still laugh and smile and everything mm. um 
And then, yeah, and then I remember, I think it was about 9.30 on the Wednesday night, his sister phoned me up to say, he's in a body bag. My goodness, how did you feel? It was like um, a bus just hit me. <laughs> That's how it felt. It was that, sh- I mean, it didn't feel real. Um, it was difficult for me for a while because bear in mind, I had a conversation with him days before. Yes. And so in my head, I'm thinking, was it something I said? You know, trying to rewind. And As you do. The, you know, the As conversation. Yes. Did I say anything? Yes. yes. Did I say anything yes. to trigger it? Did I do anything to trigger it? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I am I am a Christian. Yeah. Um, and I remember, you know, just saying to God at the time, you know, if I'm not guilty or if I haven't done anything, then please give me a sign. I think it was tricky as well because being religious or being spiritual, shall I say, mm. you know, when we think of suicide, you know, we, it's seen, it's deemed as a negative thing. Mm, yes, yes. Gonna yes, go yes, to yes. hell and things, but actually, he he was amazing. Do you know what I mean? He was such mm. a positive person. He was mm. such a on the outside, let's say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's why it's, it was a shock, happy wasn't it? Person, absolutely. He was such a, a happy person. I mean. It was my birthday, probably, I think it was probably a week or two later. Mm. And we even planned on meeting up, you know, just for wow. a catch up, just to say hello. Um, and, and I think it's that. I think it was a, just a sudden stop. Just oh. a sudden stop. Um, did he have siblings? He did have siblings. So he's really, really close to his sister. Um, and and she's the person who I'm still in contact with, really. Wow. Um, and she was the one who said to me um, a couple of days later when I was, as I said, when I was praying and I was thinking, you know, mm. please give me a sign if I, you know, mm. if I've got nothing to be guilty for, mm. or you know. Oh. Um, and I remember receiving a phone call from his sister saying, you know, you need to grieve with us because wow. you know I had no children with him you know we weren't married yeah. or anything yeah. but he was very special to me yeah and I think you know people need to realize that no matter no matter how significant you are to that person it doesn't matter you can still grieve yes oh yes much, absolutely as much as if you were yeah. married to them or as much yeah. as it was yes I understand to their children or you know yeah. it deep it was a, it really affected me quite deeply um, and is that is that is that is that quite a few years ago now? Yeah, so um he's been gone now, so so he's been gone now for almost five years. And how do you feel five years later? Um you know what, I feel like I I talk to him more now. <laughs> really? Than I did when 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 he was alive. Yeah, mm. I think. You know, he's he's so important in my life still. Um, just just there, really, because I, for me, I mean, even talking to yourself, it's just making sure mm. that his story continues. You know, I'm very proud. Absolutely, him, absolutely. Really. I'm, I'm proud of him for the person that he was. He was a positive person. Mm. He would do anything for anybody. Mm. Um, he was very generous. Mm. Um, and yeah, and and you know, like I said, he was a proud, very proud veteran. Mm. Um, I think it just angered me that actually there was nobody, there was nobody there afterwards. Mm. And I hear this, this a lot when it comes to people who have served, and they come, you know, they 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 go back, you know, they're, they're told, oh, you know, you can live a normal life now and everything, and they're not needed mm. anymore. Right. And it's a bit like, well, what now? And there's so much suicide with men that happens. Mm. And a lot of them are to do are, are those who have served because mm. they have it, it's just going from one extreme to another. Yes, and, it's, and they I, don't I suppose know it's like yeah, we, yeah, uh, yeah. It's like living leaving a big family, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And all of a yeah. sudden you haven't got anyone anymore. That sort no. of thing. Yeah. And when that we look camaraderie. at camaraderie. Yeah. yeah. And when we look at people who have come over to this country, who aren't mm-hmm. even born in this country, 
I think what gets me more is the fact that, you know, who is there for people like that? Who is there for people where you have got, you've come from a family in the Caribbean, let's say, you've come from your birthplace, you've come mm. over, you're, you're thinking, you know what, I really want to support this country, I really want to help, I really want mm. to serve, and you do all that, mm. and then you're just left. And, you know, there's there's so many working men's clubs shall we say or mm. you know when people think of veterans they think of say my dad mm. so so there's one extreme like my dad who was a veteran mm. to a 38 year old man who was also a veteran yes, so I yes, find yes. That there's a lot more things you know out there for maybe the English people those who mm. are born here and they've mm. got that family connection and everything and they mm. they come together well actually there's not a lot of people from the Caribbean or maybe Asian um service people as that, well. that's, that, that. that's really a good point you know because yeah. this is um one of the reasons why um I set up the forgotten generations to highlight these points that you're raising, points like yeah. these, you know, to say that there are people out there that's been forgotten. Yeah. You know, they're not provided for, mm -hmm. and there should be a mechanism, there should be something for them to be yeah. provided for, you know, yeah. because when these things happen, like what you just described, it affects not just the person who's gone on, but the whole family. Yeah. I think the family of... see the difference, they see the change in behaviour, but they don't know what to do. They right. don't know what to, they don't know, you know, it's, it's a case of leaving them to it, let's say, and that's really, really hard and that's really, really sad. I mean, as I said, I knew, I knew Damien, he's the, the, the person who's passed. Mm. I knew him only for about a year and a half and there's a part right. of me that wish I knew him for longer. Right. But if I'd known him for longer, I'd, I'd like to think I would I would be able to support him better. Do you know yes, what I mean? Yes, yes, but because yes. Because there were so many things going on in his life. Yes. It was very difficult for me to step yes. in really and do anything. And I guess if you if you speak to his sister or his siblings yeah. or his parents, they they probably say similar things to you. Yeah. If they knew this, yeah. if they knew that, they would yeah. might have been able to. You know, it's I mean, all I, what I remember was he used to, so he used to have two bedrooms in his place. One was of his, his bedroom and the other one was his children's room, you know, when the children would come over. And right, right, right. Children's room was smaller and there'd be things everywhere. Mm. And he would prefer, he used to say to me, he would sleep in the, in the children's room a lot more than he would sleep in his own room. Well, that's interesting. That is interesting. And I think it was probably because of the, the small closed in feeling, I suppose. And I think, and I don't know whether that was part of his PTSD, you know, the fact mm. that he just wants to be closed in and, you know, it, it was, it was just a defense mechanism, I suppose. Yeah. So, he, so he wasn't, he, he wasn't allocated to any, um, PTSD group or, or no, because we didn't know anywhere. You know, we okay. didn't know of anywhere um, back then. And I think, I think as well, you know, he was he was a lorry driver, so that's an isolating job in itself. Yes, you know, yes, 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 yes. You know, all I do is I just go home, sleep, and then go yeah. back up, wait back up, and go back to work. You know, right. and. And being right. on the road for so long, you know, it is mm. quite isolating. It's an isolating job. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, there wasn't, we didn't really look at, well, I didn't really look at things like that because I suppose in a way I thought, oh, bear in mind we weren't, we didn't see each other mm -hmm. for quite a while. Um, mm. But also I think, you know, you, you're hoping the family members are doing that. You're hoping. Yes, yes, yes. Other people yeah. are doing that. Do you know what I mean? You're hoping mm -hmm. that there's somebody that, you know, there's still that support there, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, because you don't know. We don't yeah. know. Um, but, you know, I, I really appreciate you, you, you talking about it because um, it's a very, very, very important um, issue yeah. to, to bring out into the open. Yeah. And it affects everyone not just immediately but virtually forever. forever oh yeah i mean it's it's definitely 
changed me most definitely um mm. you know but I'm aware of my own uh limitations and mm. my own um you know it, it, I, I know I can't we can try and say what mm. how long for yeah that's yeah. what I've learned you know yeah. if, if I saved him then how long for Mm. You know, and it probably would have been playing on my mind and mm. Mm. you know and it's that really yeah, and yeah. I think yeah. I mean I know for a fact that if he if he knew how people are affected the way we are now I don't mm. think he would have done it but you know sometimes people see it as it, 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 there's no way out it's very it's very difficult isn't it it's, it's very, very difficult, difficult and know? I think it's I think if you're in a dark place and you don't talk to people yeah. that can be very difficult yes. you know you have the smile on your face and you mm. you know you're you're taught to be strong and especially yeah. with men you know men boys don't cry and things like that and yes. it's like yes. as though you you have to keep this persona mm. so long that actually, you know, you start crumbling inside. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. And and yeah, what yeah. I learned when when he passed was there's um there's an organisation called um campaign against living miserably, so that are called Calm. Oh, and their nice. aims, their their target audience is men, um and they they're really good. They're a really good uh, charity, um mm. who support men, um and. Families really, who, who's you know, partner, friend, whoever, are, mm. are going through things like this and are probably contemplating suicide, or mm. you know, or they, or they've taken their life, and you know, mm. because I think women we talk a lot, and there's so many things out there for women, yeah. but actually for men, there's, there's yeah. still very small amounts of support there for men. Yeah, and it's a fact, isn't it, that men we, don't yeah. talk anywhere near talk, as much no. women, women talk, you know. No, I know, I know. And this is the reason why I think if they can't vocalise it, yeah. that was the next resource. And, and, and there, there, there are different reasons for not talking, I suppose, as well, as well because yeah. I think... If you're a man, you know it's it's this naturalism, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. You you, you 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 might think that you're weak. Yes. And then, of course, when you are you are I'm a veteran or a military person, it's even more so, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. You know, so there are reasons for it, but we need to um, I think we need to get round that somehow so we can help people. Most definitely. Know? I mean, I'm I'm so proud of both my father and you know my ex my ex-partner um mm. i'm proud of both of them and as i've yes. said you know i've I've gone from one extreme to mm. another do you know what i mean and yeah, 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 reasons yeah. As though yeah i was meant to know both of them Absolutely. you know both people Absolutely. um from caribbean backgrounds you mm. know both people who struggled um oh. because I, I i think you know i think my my father probably did suffer with PTSD as well. Um, uh, and I right. think, well, like, as I said, he had a lot of anger in him. And maybe the drink was for him to numb the pain or, mm, you know. Mm, but sadly, mm. I mean, when he died, I mean, he died of a broken heart, I would say. Um, oh. Because he missed my mum so much. Right, 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 um, right. But, you know, at the same time, I think it's amazing what... How how people are affected differently when they say. So so, so so how are you? How am I? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that's good. really that's yeah. really really good. Yeah, I'm, you know what? I mean, you know, we we all have our up days and down days, don't we? Yes. But I think, you know, God keeps me going. That's good. You know, that's I'm good. very thankful. Um, yeah. I meditate every day. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate, I would say. Yeah. Um, I'm very blessed with what I have. You know, I'm very blessed with my children. And Excellent. You know, even though my parents are no longer around. Yeah. It's a bit like my my legacy. I'm kind of starting again, if that makes sense. You know, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like the head of the, the head of the family kind of thing. Oh, good, good, good. So so what what's what's what have you got now as a future plan? Is there anything you've got? Um, well, I've recently I've, I've recently got a new job, so I've gone okay. back to being a teaching assistant, which I right. love. Right. 
learning yeah. support practitioner. So it'd be three to four year olds. Still really enjoy that. Um, um, yeah, I think for me, future plans is more for me about just living happy. Just uh, that's, happy. that's really that's really really you good. Know, just being thankful of the base. I think since lockdown, lockdown mm. has affected me in the sense that you know it just stopped all of us in our tracks and allow us to appreciate just the small things in life. Um, and that's what it's done, really. So, yes, I think I do think of future plans in terms of traveling and things. But, you know, mm. I've, I've, I bought a house a couple of years ago. That's a project in itself. Um, so I'm just, you know, supporting my daughter. So my mm. elder, she's in a, you know, a final year at university. That's great. Meanwhile, my other daughter, my, my 10 year old, she recently passed her 11 plus. Excellent. Um, yeah, so it's for me at the moment, it's more about investing in my children. Excellent. Um, investing in my children, investing in, in myself, you know, in the sense mm. of not to worry too much. Talking about children then, what advice do you have for, for young people? You know, what advice would you give to young people starting out? You know? I think my advice is, you know, it, is, it can be scary, it all depends on what their upbringing's like, I think. It's been around positive people, that's what I always say, you know, mm. kind of, the, so there's many young people, many children out there who live in dysfunctional families and very toxic families and they mm. will see it as normal. Um, right. And actually, it's That's because they don't know any different, right? They don't know any different. And it's, mm -hmm. it's actually being able to see that there is light at the end of the tunnel, that there is positivity out there. Um, and with what I've been through in life, like I've said before, you know, if I can do it, anybody can do it. If That's I a great story. It, yeah, anybody. That's a great do. story. You're a role model, quite I'm honestly. I'm a role model. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So my and, and That's one of the reasons why uh, we, we, we do this. The yeah. Forgotten Generations, and we record people telling their stories so people can actually visualize, see you as a person, yeah. you know, yeah. and yeah. sitting here talking to, to, to myself and telling your story. Because yeah. a lot of people will, will identify with that. Yeah, you know? I hope so. Because, yeah. <laughs> as I yeah. say, I mean, you know, going through a lot, but it's the people who have been in my life as well. They have, mm. They have molded me. They have changed me in many ways. Like I say, with my ex and, and his passing mm -hmm. and everything, you know, he made me become more humble. I was mm -hmm. humble anyway, but he's actually going to <laughs> me to, you know, come yeah. kind of, it's about actually, no, be humble. Um, you know, I say to myself sometimes, I'm breathing for my mom, I'm breathing for my dad, I'm breathing for my ex. Oh, you know, these that, are the people that, I'm, I'm striving for. Really, really good. Really good. Um, and yeah, and, and I think you know, enjoy enjoy the life. We only live once. We have yeah. to have positive times. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be the lavish things. You don't have to have loads of money for it. Mm. It's just appreciate the simplest of things. You know, going for walks, being in contact. Beautiful. With positive That's beautiful because that that does make a difference. You know, it does, what yeah. you just said there, you know. Yeah, and mental health wise as well, yes. you know, going through a living cost crisis at the moment and everything's going up. And I yeah. think if we keep panicking and we keep being negative, mm. our health will deteriorate, mm. our mental health will deteriorate. Well, actually, it's out of our control. Do you know what I mean? All we can I do, do I, I do understand what you're pray. saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can all we can mm. do is just pray and have faith and just live within your means. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Sonia, I've got to say, you've taken us on the journey. <laughs> Quite <Yeah>. a journey. <laughs> Thank you so much, because I, I know You're for sure welcome. that people, people listening to, to your journey there will certainly um, get a lot from it. Um, I certainly did, um, yeah. and, and it's, it's, it's been fabulous. Have you got any questions for me at all? No, no, I've, I've, I've really enjoyed sharing my story. And that's what it's about. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's so good to somebody be so practical um, yeah. going through the experiences that you've gone through in life. You know, life isn't a bed of roses. So, you know, 
people people look at what also, you though i think speaking about like you said about um the, the forgotten generations and people who served you mm -hmm. know for me it's about um you know my, my father his name is theophilus alba latouche mm -hmm. so he i've said he was a, a veteran and also damien gale he too was a veteran so from yeah. You That's know, right. from an older generation to a younger generation. Yes, those yes, are my indeed. two. Yeah, those are my two who I'm fully, you know, very, very proud of, and have been a part. Well of done. I want to say a massive thank you for this for your participation. You're very welcome. <laughs> thank you and for inviting thank me. Thank okay. you. Thank you.